book review on Becoming by Michelle Obama. This book was printed by The Crown in 2018, New York. This copy is 426 pages long, and there's an audio version that Michelle narrates it herself. I highly recommend the printed copy because there are several beautiful images on the inside where you can see pictures of her family, Michelle growing up going to college in Princeton, law school in Harvard, pictures of her and Barack. Very lovely book. Definitely highly recommend the hard copy as well. This book was actually written in three different parts. First part is called Becoming Me. Second part is Becoming Us. And the third part is Becoming More. So I actually read this book in 2018 when it came out. And I actually read it at a very interesting time in my life you know I feel like I really resonated with this book because I feel like I was also having my stage of becoming you know in 2018 I actually just came back from living abroad in Shanghai and I read a little bit of this book right before I left and when I got back that summer of going into my junior year of college I read this book and finished it I absolutely resonated with essentially mostly the first part because you know becoming yourself is something that hopefully everyone goes through, but I definitely went through it that summer and reading this book essentially helped me articulate what that meant to become more of yourself and have that self-realization, that self-ownership and, you know, becoming who you truly are meant to be. So the first part of this book opens up with Michelle growing up in Southside Chicago. She shares a bedroom with her brother Craig and she lives with her mom and dad. Michelle Robinson, a very determined young lady, she actually says in the preface, in the first line essentially, when I was a child, I had simple goals in life. You know, she wanted simple things. She wanted a nice two-story house with a staircase. She wanted like a four-door car. And she also wanted to be a pediatrician. And this is when we first learned that Michelle was essentially a people pleaser. She said that she wanted to be a pediatrician because she liked the reaction she got from adults. You know, adults would be excited when they heard her say such a well-respected career. But Michelle didn't want to be a pediatrician. This was something that she essentially thought others would think is desirable and respectable. But, you know, this didn't really stop Michelle from pursuing what she wanted to do. She had this tenacity to always go after what she wanted and do well. One of the parts in the first part that actually stuck out to me the most is when Michelle sat down with one of her guidance counselors and she was telling the counselor that she wanted to go to Princeton University. The guidance counselor was not supportive. He said, I don't think you can get to Princeton. You're essentially not good enough you know one of those really sad moments of having someone tell you you're not good enough when you probably are good enough you just have to find that in yourself and work towards that goal and what i thought was so beautiful about that is michelle essentially did get into princeton and she said that she wanted to go to that guidance counselor's office to you know brag to her that she got it and she wanted to prove her wrong but then michelle realized that she doesn't need to prove anything to anybody except for herself. And I thought that was really, really powerful where sometimes, at least for myself, you know, I used to think that I had to prove to other people that I am good enough, that I can do certain things that they said that I could not do, but that's a waste of time. You need to choose what you wanna do and become a better version of who you are. And that's why becoming you, becoming me, is a significant part to me in this book. In Becoming Us, second part of the book we have michelle working at a law firm and this is where she meets mr barack obama this was actually a really <laughs> a really beautiful and juicy part we learn about their relationship and how it was a little a little scandalous in a way because michelle was actually barack's mentor barack was doing a summer internship in between harvard what was so interesting and i thought what actually sits with me to this day is Barack was actually late on his first day and Mich Barack actually had you know all this praise you know all the other ladies in the office were like oh this guy Barack he's a hot shot he's handsome he's tall he's smart and Michelle you know she didn't want to give in to the rumors so she was just like all right whatever I heard these things but this guy is late where he at 
and you know eventually he gets there and this could have you know ruined his job you know Barack is coming late on his first day and uh, Michelle you know gave him a second chance and a few weeks later they're having their first little cute date having some ice cream sitting on a stoop of like the last few weeks of summer I believe and I feel like that's so cute it's very like American all-American soft serve ice cream love I thought it was super cute. One of my other favorite parts of this part is Michelle talking about her struggles in law. She, to some, this is like an aspirational career. She's a lawyer, she makes great money, but she didn't, she wasn't happy in her career. She felt as if she was just stuck. She would get to work, she'd have her head down for hours, going through papers and cases and cases, but she didn't feel like she was accomplishing anything, which is so powerful to hear because you know, we all think of lawyers. Lawyers are very important, a very important career. But when she was, you know, in this practice, she didn't feel fulfilled. You know, she wanted more. She wanted to become more than what she was already at. And essentially she was depressed and she didn't really know what to do. So she eventually found her way into other jobs. And one of my favorite chapters in this part is when Michelle is at an interview and she brings baby Sasha with her to the interview. And it's such a beautiful part because, you know, Michelle talks about how she, at this point, just didn't care. You know, she didn't care that she brought her daughter with her. She showed up as herself. She wasn't making any excuses anymore. She wasn't gonna belittle herself. She wasn't gonna diminish herself for other people, for her approval. She's like, you know what? I'm showing up as me and my daughter is an extension of me. And she's coming to this interview with me and you can hire me for this job or not, but I am showing up as my full self. And I feel like that is just such a beautiful takeaway in this book where you really need to just show up as yourself. It's very difficult and definitely takes a lot of time and a lot of courage, but if you're not gonna show up for yourself, who's gonna show up for you, you know? And Michelle really, she really, you know, taught me that it's so important to really just be you and don't be apologetic, you know? It's okay to be audacious, you know, have the audacity to take up space and it ultimately paid off. You know, she got that job and she became more which leads us to the next part, which is becoming more. This part primarily focuses on Michelle and Barack, their marriage, and a little bit of the struggles of Barack becoming more of a political figure. Barack is always into politics, but at this point, Barack is actually running for office. And Michelle was definitely a little apprehensive because she wasn't a big fan of politics. She saw that politics was very dirty, very, cunning at times and she didn't really want to get involved in it especially with the image that she had to portray at all times but ultimately she wanted to support her husband and she decided to go full first lady mode the best way that she could this was really difficult for her because she had to be this you know essentially this perfect woman she had to be very poised very polished which she very much is but having the scrutiny of essentially all of america and then once Barack became the actual president, the whole world. You know, she was first lady of the United States of America, but also the first black first lady of America. So she had intersectionality working against her, racism, sexism, classism essentially too. You know, she has that American rags to riches story. And she is at the same time, this black woman who who has never held this position before so it's like we don't have a standard to compare her to she is the new standard so she had to really just create a new persona but also hold on to herself and i feel like if you look back at interviews and some of the things that she accomplished we really see that but in this book we really really get to read you know a good amount of some of the things she struggled with you know some of the outfits she would wear should be scrutinized her height, being a tall woman, her being a strong woman, people were just saying very cruel things to her. And, you know, this definitely did affect her at times, but she ultimately knew that she is more than what these people have to say to her. And she truly knows who she is. And she is this strong, hardworking, great woman. And this is, this is powerful. You know, she chose, she chose herself. And I feel like I'm going on a tangent, but this part, I will say becoming more, it's not as in depth and as intimate as the other two parts of the book. You know, this is when she's living in the White House. So she essentially can't reveal too much about the day-to-day -day life. 
But something that I really, really liked what she talked about is when they were in the White House, she wanted to give her daughters the most realistic lifestyle as they could. She didn't bring them out to a lot of the dinners. They weren't really allowed to be out in the press. And she tried to give them the most normal life as possible, which I think is great. You know, the, you know, these poor girls, Sasha and Malia didn't, they didn't sign up for this. And Michelle and Barack both had typical childhoods in America. So they wanted to give their children the best typical childhoods they could. And I like how that they tried, you know, that's not something that's always possible, especially with that high level of security, but they were able to accomplish some type of normality in their schedule and their day-to-day -day lives. So this book is definitely an emotional ride. Parts where you'll laugh, there's parts where you'll cry, there's parts where you'll be angry, there's parts where you're rooting for Michelle, rooting for everyone around her, and honestly, it's, it's such a fun book. You know, I haven't really read a memoir like this. It says a lot of things where it's like, you can be making all this money, but if you're not happy, is it worth it? And she had to really look at herself in the mirror and really say that you know she gave up this really high paying job to do something that's a lot less money but she got more out of her life when she switched whole careers and uh, honestly it paid off and what i really really love about this book is like she maintained a healthy balance of like work and fitness she talks about how she would go to the gym every morning and how she would eat healthy and she carried that into the White House as well. And she even brought it when she was a first lady, that was her project. She, you know, I know like there's a lot of like controversy about Michelle Obama's like meal plan at schools. Even at my school, I like, you know, we saw the effect how the meals changed to be a little bit more healthy. And everyone blamed Michelle on the school lunches not being as tasty. It's great to see in the book that this wasn't just a plan or an agenda. This was a lifestyle choice that she made for herself, but ultimately wanted to spread this to the whole entire country. And it's great to see that she really lived this life. Didn't just talk that talk, she walked that walk. And I love that about her. You know, a lot of the great memoirs that I've read, a lot of these people who are successful always talk about maintaining a healthy diet and healthy work-life balance and she that was always in her goal and I love to see that she was able to continue that just doing those little fitness things eating a little bit better does make a difference and not just to yourself but people around you so if you have friends that are working out often eating healthier you're gonna be doing the same things as well and you know that's what her family did and that's what some of her friends did and essentially that's what she encouraged the whole entire country to do all right everyone thank you so much for watching my book review on becoming please like comment and share and let me know if you want me to do any other book reviews in the future thank you